Ethan, you you um in the group chat, I think a week ago when you were starting to conceive this story that you just wrote, it's called uh, maybe the pedestal was a mistake question mark. That is um, how that's the what your latest it, yeah. story. Um, you would ask the question, who invented player empowerment? Who coined it? Yeah. And I, I found out, I did some research and um, no, that's, I, that's my I, segment. Even, you, you even can't did do his that. own research. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did my own research. Um, I, okay. I think we both know who it is, but I don't think, I think you and I, Tom, right now, we know who it is, who coined this term that, that just went everywhere, but I don't think anybody out there Michael knows who Beasley. it is. Michael Beasley. Michael Beasley. Oh, that's not who I was going to say. <laughs> no, I was kidding. It's still percent of your brain. Uh, <laughs> you were doing the thing like I was a kid. <laughs> you, got, you got so excited. <laughs> like, Wait, Wait did Michael Beasley coin it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is my research incorrect? <laughs> um, my guess would be LeBron. Somehow, LeBron did it. Well, he he did the thing itself, but we're talking about the uh, the semantics. We're talking about the term, the etymology, the, na- the naming of it. Right? Yeah, okay. the yeah. naming of it. I believe, based on my research, that it was coined by Kevin Arnovitz, but highly wow! po- but highly popularized by wow. Bill Simmons. Mm. Mm, okay, what if I did? I think I think you're absolutely right. Um, I think for all intents and purposes, this is Kevin Arnovitz's baby, and we should treat it as such. And it has grown up into this evil thing, right? That you've <laughs> yeah. written about. Uh-huh. Um, but wait a second, why I, are we talking some... to Ethan? Can we get Kevin Arnold on and get he, Ethan? He doesn't want to here? talk to because he doesn't want to talk to us anymore because he's no, left he's and he's he's doing bigger and better things these days. Mm. Yeah, can't maybe, get him. maybe that maybe that'll be another episode on Illuminati. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, I did some research. I went to newspapers.com, of which I'm a subscriber, mm. just like I am of House of Strauss. And uh, it co- it costs money, Maze. Don't look at me like that. Newspapers.com? It's a great resource. If you want to a- actually do research, you can go into okay. the annals of, of the, annals. the world's publications. Anyway, when you type in player empowerment, NBA, and you have quotation marks around the term player empowerment, and you search for the earliest term, I pull up a story from February 23rd. 2011 in the Detroit free press, a column by drew sharp says NBA's biggest problem is it's unreliable draft. Here's how it starts. You ready, Ethan? This is, mm-hmm. this is like a fossil here. Okay. Yeah. 2011. It's not as if NBA haters ever run low on reasons for their ire, but Carmelo Anthony finally ditching Denver for New York provides more ammunition. Here it is. The NBA has become the model for player empowerment. Wow. And that ticks off a lot of people. They're angry that 25-year-old millionaires dare to think for themselves regarding where they play. The most influential stars are turning the league into a cast system, distinguishing the haves from the haven't got a chances. Ooh, that's such a newspaper <laughs> phrase right there. Wow. You know, it might be it might be Drew Sharp and I don't think it's the same as Andrew Sharp, uh, a friend of the program. Um Drew Sharp appears to be different than him. So <laughs> uh so um, so why is player empowerment a failure? Uh, uh a mistake as you called it, uh the NBA's PR malaise. Um, I think it's malaise. That's number one. Uh, number two, I don't think I said player empowerment's a mistake. I mean, that's a big concept. Uh, oh, you, you, you said a oh, question mark. Mistake. Oh, well, I said putting the, the player on a the player on a pedestal. It sounds like for, uh, it sounds like 40 year old virgin. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they putting the player on the pedestal is a mistake. See, you um, see what happened here, Ethan, is that they planted a lot of seeds. <laughs> Um, I think that's what I, the player empowerment thing, though. Let's 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 attack that first. I think one of the issues with it is that it doesn't empower players writ large. Um, and that's a fallacy. It empowered a few players. And to be fair to those players, the NBA is very top heavy in terms of celebrity, in terms of selling tickets and in terms of winning because there are only five guys on a team. So a star is a big deal. And 
it was a little bit, I don't know, you could say socialistic and how they distribute the money and how they do the CBA, that there is a max salary. LeBron James would have been making so much more money in his prime than he was paid. So you can definitely understand the perspective of the superstars who wanted more control and more power because they weren't getting paid what they should have been paid in money. So you, you understand the perspective of it, but it does seem like it got things out of whack and it seemed as though the league became a little bit disordered with guys jumping around and not seeming to have any kind of tether to anything, but whatever seems like a good idea in the moment. And I think Brooklyn might be the apotheosis of it. Just this hollow team that means nothing to nobody and everybody's miserable. Um, So that appears to have been a detour and something that didn't exactly work out. I like how you have to take a breath after all of that. I was one breath. I was just no breath the whole time. It was just like a fucking in, auctioneer. Wait, can I curse? In, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean it's recorded, so uh, okay, okay. Shit, right? like an auctioneer. Uh, yeah. Even at some point, do you feel like the stances being made opposite of Kyrie become performative? Mm, yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it depends, though. What do you I feel like you've got a sense on this. So who do you think is being performative right now? No, well, I said it already earlier on the podcast. I said Josai. Oh, yeah. Oh, not God. by having a, a six oh. point list, but by revealing to the world that there's a six point list. No. Are you and, and, suggesting uh, that Josai leads that? I mean, yeah, Are I think you? we all know that Josai <laughs> hates Kyrie Irving and that that's that's part of this. Um, obviously, Kyrie seems to be about one of the most annoying co-workers anybody could have and it's understandable and the movie he shared seems to be absolutely insane but there's no moral authority that Josiah has to really impose on Kyrie Irving given his connections I think we can say that much um, when he is basically ripping Daryl Morey for standing up for people in Hong Kong and he's just a total CCP functionary. I mean, two wrongs don't make a right, but it's just by what, right. by what standard does Joe Sai have to dictate morality to Kyrie? And then this is going too far. I think I get it. I understand. Look, I wish people were allowed to say more than they are at many corporations. I don't like when corporations punish people for saying things that might be outside the boundaries, even if I dislike what's being said a lot of the time, but I understand it. I get it. I understand the dynamics behind the Brooklyn Nets saying, we got to fine you. We got to suspend you five games. We play in Brooklyn. You're putting out something that's anti-Semitic. We can't have it. I get it. Where it gets weird is we need to put you through these trainings. You need to say that you need to disavow the thing. I mean, once you cross over from that territory to punishing you for saying something to you need to actively perform like you believe you don't act things you don't actually believe. I just don't understand the benefit to society that we're really accomplishing there. And it does seem, as Amin said, to be rather performative. 